There are many people who are afraid to quit smoking because they're afraid they will become nervous wrecks. They're afraid that they're going to lose what has been a wonderful coping mechanism for them when encountering stress. They found that when they smoke under stressful conditions, they calm down. So it's only logical to think that if you quit smoking and you no longer have this what has worked is a marvelous tool for helping you calm down under stress. It's only logical to think you're going to become more nervous. I have a video already that was titled, Why Do Smokers Smoke? And it's a relatively lengthy video. And in there, there's a section, and it's about 12 minutes into the video, about the interaction between nicotine and stress. But a lot of people, I'm afraid, don't get to that video and because of its length. So what I'm going to do here is basically pull the v section on stress and place it right into this video. So it's only going to be a, a, a few minute video compared to the length that it was before. It's a graphic representation showing what happens with nicotine levels under normal conditions as contrasted to under, under stressful conditions. Stress has an effect on the body that causes the excretion of nicotine. And the calming effect that people have is a false effect. It's not calming them down from stress. It's pulling them out of drug withdrawal, the stress induced. A drug withdrawal that won't happen once they become ex-smokers. So anyway, the short video here, you know, following will cover this area with a graphic representation of what happens to your nicotine level under normal conditions and under stressful conditions and will help you understand what the problem is that people think they're solving when they're smoking as opposed to what really is happening. Here we have two illustrations. On the left is a non-smoker. A non-smoker, if they encounter stress, they become stressed. That's just the natural function of stress. They can become irritable, they can become upset, but physiologically, they're just going to have the effect of the stress itself. If they solve the stress, they become happy again. If they don't solve the stress, they get frustrated. On the right is the cycles that smokers go through when encountering stress. In the beginning, they feel stress just like the non-smoker does. They can get upset by the stress itself. But then something happens. The urine becomes acidic. Now, the urine also became acidic on the non-smoker, but they didn't feel it. There's no side effect. There's no sign to the non-smoker that the urine is acidic. But when the smoker's urine becomes acidic, they excrete nicotine, and then they're popped into drug withdrawal. The yellow circle is illustrating that this person is feeling bad. Not only are they feeling stress at the moment, but they are feeling drug withdrawal on top of the stress. There are four things a smoker can do now under this circumstance. One thing they can do is not solve the problem and smoke a cigarette. And lo and behold, they'll start to feel better. Now it's um, crucial to understand what better means. Better means they feel just like the non-smoker who hasn't solved their problem yet. They're not in withdrawal anymore because they replenished the nicotine, but they're not feeling any better than a non-smoker who faced the same stress would be feeling at this moment in time. They just wouldn't be in withdrawal anymore. Now another thing they can do, which is great, is solve the problem and smoke a cigarette. Well, then life is wonderful. Things are complete. They are just happy people, no longer in withdrawal, and their stress is gone. They're like a non-smoker who solved the problem. They're not in withdrawal, and they don't have any stress. But there's two other states that the smoker can end up in, represented here. The first one on the right is they could solve the problem, but not smoke. Well, this one is particularly annoying because the problem is gone. They've resolved it, and they still feel crummy. The withdrawal was not going to ease by the problem being resolved. And in the worst state, the absolute worst, not solve the problem and not smoke a cigarette. You don't want to be around people like this. You don't want to be a person like this, but this is a state of life that smokers find themselves in a lot these days. Working in environments or living in environments that won't let them smoke, giving them stress. And again, these people have no resort except to face these stresses, not smoke a cigarette, and deal with stress and withdrawal simultaneously. The day a person quits smoking, 
they end that cycle. They will now face stress as a ex-smoker, which in a sense is very similar to how non-smokers face it. But they don't have drug withdrawal complicating it. Given equivalent stress as an ex-smoker, most people will find that they are calmer than when they were smoking. And yet, all the time that they were smoking, they believed they need cigarettes to calm them down. It was turning them into more nervous people under stressful episodes than they would have been if they just would stop smoking. When people learn the dangers of smoking and also start to understand how bad they may feel because they are smokers, they may often try to quit smoking. The problem is, if they do this with limited understanding, they could panic. They'll have plenty of nicotine in them at the moment that they stop smoking. They toss their cigarettes and that's it. But then the nicotine level starts to drop, and then their body starts wrecking havoc on them. It starts making their mind want a cigarette. It starts coming up with reasons why they should smoke. The imagination of, do I want to be a fat non-smoker all my life or a skinny smoker? That's one of the first rationalizations that some people will pick up trying to justify their smoking. Then the nicotine gets lower. The people go into real drug withdrawal states and then they kick themselves or why am I doing this to myself? This hurts. This is painful. Why am I doing this? If they could just hang in and get the nicotine out of their system to get through the three day period. And for some people, it's only a one day period. For some people, it's a two and for some, it's a three. But if they can get through that three day period and nicotine is eradicated, they will start to physically feel better. And then as they start learning to more, do more and more things and get more associations out of the way and prove to themselves that their life goes on without smoking, they can become truly free of nicotine. And they can feel a great sense of freedom and reap benefits that go for quality of life improvements and for health improvements and just generally living longer and better. It is a wonderful way of life when people pull it off. It may be tough getting there, but it's worth the effort considering the pain and suffering that they can go through if they don't quit smoking and get anything wrong that smoking can cause. So if you're a smoker, give yourself a chance to see how much better your life can become once you quit smoking. Not the week you're quitting smoking, then you're finding out what it's like to be in withdrawal, but get yourself past that withdrawal. And just remember then what smoking was really like, what you were really like when you were smoking, in comparison to what you're like now. The odds are you're going to find yourself calmer, you'll often find yourself happier, healthier, living a longer, more productive life. And to maintain this higher quality of life, it's really just a matter of sticking to the personal commitment that you hopefully made the day you stopped to never take another puff.